Dylan, Ranger Dylan, Ranger Richardson, however, this is my first year here in Shenandoah National Park. Previously, I've been at Great Smoky Mountains National Park, as well as a little time out in Yellowstone. Uh, so if anybody's curious, looking to head in any of those directions, I can still answer some questions from there. Big star of the show today, though. My friend here, we got an uh, application here for an ecological niche. Anyone here know what ecological niche is? That's a niche. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. No. Yeah. Um, that's a cool trick. Anyway, I'm going to put this in my pocket. Anyway, go ahead. You raise your hand. A small habitat where species are Absolutely. Yeah, a small place in the environment where a particular species is happy to be. Uh, or well adapted for. For instance, if I said bobcat. Bobcat's a carnivore, but they specialize in eating little things. Same with the wolf. It's a carnivore, but it's specializing in big game, big stuff. Sit down. Sit down. What about a turkey vulture? Where's a turkey vulture fit? What's its niche? Carry on. Carry on. Yeah, it's eating dead stuff. It actually makes it a type of decomposer. It's kind of funny thing. What normally comes to mind when you say decomposer? Fungi. Fungus, absolutely. Maybe uh, bacteria, bugs, that kind of thing. These guys, they just work a lot faster. All right, so I got Erica's application here. I can't make hide or tail of it. What? If you can hopefully read Turkey Vulture with me, we'll help figure this out. Got a free hand there. Stick it around. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So, starting up at the top with uh, the name. What do we have here? I see a black mark. Can I read? That. What do what do you ask? What, what name do you see? What name do you got? Erica. Erica. Yeah. Erica, that's the name of this bird here. My wife and I disagree on where she got that name. She says it just came from uh, something being wrong in a receipt. I said it was me that came up with it because it's a fitting name. I think I'm right, but hey. I want to point out, Erica and I at this year's company picnic, we got the best friendship award out of everybody. So she came, she hangs out with me in my backpack all the time, wherever I go. That's pretty cool. What other, what other names we got? Turkey vulture. Yeah. That's the name that European settlers gave to these guys. You see? It's, they'd seen vultures before. There's vultures over in Europe and Asia. But now they've encountered turkeys. Nice big cool red heads. So you get this kind of thing. Good job, Jenny. So it kind of looks like a turkey and it kind of does what a vulture does. So turkey vulture. Pretty, pretty simple thing to put together for them. What else we got? Peace Eagle. Peace Eagle. Yeah. Now that's, the Cherokee peoples weren't really in this area, but well, to the south and west of here, the Cherokee people call these guys Peace Eagles. A bit like, uh, for a couple reasons. They're similar size to eagles. When you see them soaring around, you could mistake an eagle for a turkey vulture. Also, the big thing is they don't have to kill for their meat. They don't have to kill for their food. Also, also, they're very quiet, very peaceful like birds. They don't have voice boxes. I already mentioned that. Even this, if this were a real turkey vulture, I'd have to be doing the talking in this interview. The best they do is little hisses and grunts. What other names we got? Anybody want to try it? Cathartis Aura. Cathartis Aura. That's the scientific name, the Latin name. Translates roughly to cooling breeze or cleansing wind. 
kind of cool names. Any that y'all like of those, do you have any favorites? Erica. Erica, I like that one too. And also PC. That's usually the one that people like. So if you wanted to start calling a turkey vulture a peace eagle, I wouldn't say anything. All right. So moving on, important stuff for the job. Skills and adaptations. What skills and adaptations we got? Head is bald. The head is bald. All right. So remember, what do they eat? We've already shown this picture around. What do they eat? That stuff. That stuff. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. if your job's to reach in to eat the insides of something dead, do you want feathers all over your head to get covered in stuff? Dead stuff? Not really. So, you have that nice bald head that can reach in, eat things without getting there. Oh, we got one visiting? Hey! This is like the second time I've given this program where one's actually shown up. What do we pay these guys for? <laughs> yeah, that little rock there. Nice. Anyways, all right. What other adaptations we got? Strong stomach acid. Yeah. Turkey vultures. Their stomach acid is about a hundred times stronger than ours. So, remember, they eat dead stuff. Are they always going to know what killed the dead stuff? No. So they got to be ready for just about anything. Between their immune system and the strong stomach acid, these guys can eat anthrax, botulism, rabies. Turkey vulture don't care. So it's a pretty good adaptation to be having a strong stomach acid. What else we got? Feathers. Feathers are black. You might hear of a car with a black leather interior. Maybe even worse, a black vinyl interior. All right. There's a little song for this. Uh, winds, winds picking up, but windy. If you'd imagine that dark colors taking a lot of the heat. They might spread their wings and sing this little song. And again, I'm used to there being kids around, but for y'all, it's okay. I'm gonna soak up the sun and kill all the bacteria. Uh, on me. <laughs> so yeah, you'll find these turkey vultures. Hold your applause to me. <laughs> um, you'll see them doing something like this on power lines, telephone poles, tops of houses. You have like 15 of them in a line. There's another one. Yeah. yeah. Definitely got the dihedral. Talk about that in a second. I want to see the flash of white. We'll get to those in a second. Anyway, so yeah, they bake the bacteria off of their feathers. Uh, if you do back, like if you test it, it's actually more similar to what you find on like a solar panel than what you find on a bird. It's a really cool adaptation to help keep clean. Remember, they eat dead stuff. A lot of these do that. What else we got? Beak is hooked. The beak is hooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now these guys, unlike their uh, more uh, African counterparts that can crush and bite bone, these guys, they actually have a really weak beak, a really weak bite. Uh, they don't have to. They, they can let stuff soften up a little bit before they tear into it. But they use that hooked beak to cut and prod. But more importantly, what I like to make note of, for a long time, we weren't really sure where to rank turkey vultures, where to put them in like the list. Is it more, are they more related to eagles, more related to hawks like the ones in African Europe, or maybe they're their own lineage? Turns out they're more closely related to eagles. Uh, so I got a picture, take note of the hooked beak. I've got a bald eagle and a balder kind of eagle. I really like this picture of the turkey vulture. They look like really anxious about something. The picture, they're just sitting on a beach, just looking kind of concerned. Something that I notice is their head is very small. Yeah. In, pro in proportion to the body. 
if you pluck the feathers off the bald eagle tooth, it'll be pretty small as well. A lot of times, a bird is mostly feathers. If you imagine plucking a chicken, they go from like that to not much anything on the insides. What other adaptations we got? A super strong nose. Yeah, and this is one of the things that we can do to differentiate them from black vultures. That's the other vulture that you'll find on the East Coast. Now, when I come around with this photo, turkey vultures, they still... Oh, goodness. Jamie. That's all right. They smell... I'm sure they don't smell very good, but they smell very well. Uh, most birds really don't have much of a sense of smell. Owls specifically have almost none. Sit down. Uh, there's a saying that if you smell a skunk in a tree, it's probably an owl. Skunks don't really climb trees. They're out at night, uh, so owl gets sprayed and does not care. Turkey vultures, totally opposite end of the spectrum. They smell really, really well. So, for instance, they can smell what they're looking to go after up to a mile away. I guess the picnic area is probably about a mile away. I feel like I smell it was over in the picnic area and somebody cooking over there. So it's a real good sense of smell. When I come around, I'm going to show you the difference. The black vulture does not have that same sense of smell. In front of the eye, there's a big sort of lump in there, and that's where their olfactory bulb is. And you can see the difference between the two just the size of that sniffer. So even if you're colorblind, you can tell. Black vultures are much more like other birds that use their keen eyesight. So if one's flying around, how are you going to tell a turkey vulture from a black vulture? Oh, well, their head is red. Yeah, their head is red, but if they're way up in the air and you can't see yeah. that, absolutely. One is smaller. Yep. Tur turkey vultures tend to be a little bigger. Also, big, big tail. This will help you a lot. The whole underside of a turkey vulture's wing is white. They've got this big strip going all the way up. Black vultures get what they call stars. Almost if, as if we were to raise our arms out and just our hands were white, it's exactly like that. So I'm going to come around with another picture here, take a look at the whole white underside versus just the white ends. And then something else to note, the uh, black vulture has a very fanned tail versus the turkey vulture is very columnar. Who, who is Ben? It says here a, a Ben is the black vulture. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I try to... Black vultures can be a little mean to turkey vultures sometimes. Yeah. The turkey vulture will smell something dead, and they'll go find it. And the black vultures will just follow the turkey vultures and then kind of like be more aggressive and run the turkey vultures off of the dead thing. So yeah. All right. What other skills and adaptations we got? <laughs> Anybody want to take a plunge? I poop on my legs and feet. Sure enough. These guys, remember, they have a dirty job. And a lot of times they can be in the middle of the desert or wet areas. Sometimes they don't have water to bathe themselves like other birds do. So, remember that strong stomach acid? What comes out the other end is also pretty acidic. It helps them to cool down and a little antibacterial, almost like they got a little hand sanitizer just ready to go all the time. Uh, you see one flying, their legs might look white. They don't have white legs. So, good job, buddy. It's a little bit of one, right? Exactly. <laughs> all right. Moving on from that, though, what else we got? A puke. Yeah, a puke attack power. Yeah. So, turkey vultures. Remember, they're eating dead stuff, right? Is dead stuff going to run away? It's going to fight back? So these guys, do they need to fly fast? Not really. Do they need to have big claws and talons to grab onto stuff? No. 
so they don't. They actually have pretty weak feet, so far as birds go. Uh, so what do they do to protect themselves? They can take their most recent meal, especially if they're on the ground doing their kind of vulnerable thing. Uh, they can take their most recent meal and projectile vomit it up to six feet away. Oh, that so reminds like, me. Uh, yeah. re reminds me of certain dinosaur I saw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So again, if you're eating dead stuff, what is? Can, can you imagine it be very pleasant to get puked on by a turkey vulture? It's it's really not. Actually, if you uh, find one of these, find yourself in a wildlife rehabilitation setting, or uh, need to grab a turkey vulture. A lot of times with birds, you go grab the feet, turn them upside down, wrangle them in, and hold them down. Well, turkey vultures, as soon as you go for the feet, turn them upside down, they go, hmm, ammunition, and they'll puke on you. So it's important to keep them more upright as best you can, uh, or maybe put something over their heads, which will help. All right. I think, is that all our skills and adaptations? All right. We can't all be perfect. What uh, what weaknesses and threats do we have? Oh, before I do that, the babies. That's the, anybody ever seen a uh, bald eagle nest? For a tree, hop on the tree. Oh, my goodness. Oh. And you can have one of those books if you'd like. It's a Junior Ranger book. Take one. It's very windy. Very windy. Yeah. Finally, she sat down. Anyways, uh -huh. the babies. Now, we've seen bald eagle nests, big, great, big old things on the tops of trees. You may ever see a turkey vulture nest. Yeah, because they don't. They're lazy. We might find like a little thick area of thicket back, like back behind me there. They'll lay their eggs just down in that or perhaps like a cliffside or a cave. They're pretty lazy birds in that regard, but to keep themselves safe, the babies can also do that vomit. So if you see one of these guys, keep your distance. If you do go up and aggress on it, maybe try to be mindful that, hey, you need to remove it from a building. They often like to lay their eggs as well in like disused outhouses and like barns and things. They develop the red color on their head when they grow old. I always thought they kind of look like little fuzzy bowling pins. You can see one standing up straight. So, pretty good. Now, weaknesses and threats. What else? What sort of weaknesses and threats do you think these guys got? Lead poison. Yeah, lead poison. For where they get it, could be a couple sources. Uh, if they're in an area with a lot of fish, they could potentially ingest enough and build it up. But the big thing is lead shot. If there's any hunters in the audience, be really certain if you're using lead shot to get your kill, uh, because if you get shot and runs off and you don't find it, dies later, turkey vulture goes to clean up, a little bit of lead goes a long way. These guys, they got about a six foot wingspan. Anybody want to guess about how much they weigh? I'll start the bidding at 15 pounds. Anybody taking 15 pounds? Hey, I'm going a little lower. Going about 10, 10 pounds. 10 pounds going down. Anybody taking 10? Going on two. You're the first person to go under, I think. <laughs> about four to five pounds. Four to five pounds. Um, they are very. Remember, it's mostly air in the feathers. You know, if I had two of these and I did my wingspan, I'd have like an eight-foot wingspan. I'd be great at basketball. But anyways, so yeah, they're not, they don't weigh much. That lead makes it through their system really quickly because that's strong stomach acid. It ends up paralyzing their stomach. It's not a very nice thing for them. Uh, if you see a turkey vulture on the ground, almost acting drunkenly, maybe let a wildlife rehabilitator know if you have one in your area. Very well could have got into some lead. Uh, they can save them from that. They do some chelation therapy, and they'll be all right. And then what's the other that you see? Cars. Cars. Because they... I'm sure we can all imagine 
Um, some of us might have hit a, a small animal on the way here. A turkey vulture goes to clean up. They don't fly fast. They don't, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't do much aggressively. So when you're driving on Skyline, do not pull the speed limit. Give these guys a break. So what do you think? You think Eric has got what it takes to be a decomposer in the park? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And? If you see one flying around today, maybe you'll appreciate him a little more and tell him good job. Stay about six feet away from it if you can. All right, with that, thank you all very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, any questions or whatnot, feel free.